nine minutes and a world to come. So hold on to your seats for a rib-rattling roar through the Austrian hills. Coming up now is the smash that got Pathé a picture and the rider a brain concussion. It's the Styrian motorbike classic and it ends with the crash of the year. A little difference of opinion. Here's European champion Bowman versus German wrestler Trinkelt if you can sort him out. In this business, you take it on the bounce. again via English lanes to quiet Cockington. A few miles from Torquay, it celebrates a new milestone in a hundred years of history. The whole village comes under the hammer. Later, villagers got the smiles and buyers a disappointment. Cockington went under the counter. It was sold privately for around a quarter of a million. So if you wanted to beat the beer shortage by buying Lot 6, the local pub, you missed your chance. Anyway, Cockington was valued at five bob in the Doomsday Book, so 900 years have certainly pushed the price up. In the Hall Darville, Ayrshire, comes the town's most distinguished citizen, Sir Alexander Fleming, discoverer of life-saving drug penicillin. From Provost Patterson, Sir Alexander receives the freedom of the borough. Later, Darville's new Burgess visited the old schoolhouse at Loudon Moor, where he went as a boy. Now, with Lady Fleming, he returns with an international reputation. A great Scotsman comes home. Now at the salon ceremony of the Perahera. Through candy city streets go the newly scrubbed, richly bedecked elephants. In the golden casket rides Buddhism's most sacred relic, the Tooth of Buddha. For 16 centuries, devout Buddhists have walked in the Perahera. For them, time stood still. Now meet screen stars here for the royal film performance. While Ray Milland looks on, Reginald Gardner introduces. Interesting to me, I've just been called upon to introduce all these charming people around me. We're all on our way on the maiden voyage, as you can see, of the Queen Elizabeth. And we're appearing in front of the King and Queen at the Empire Theatre. I personally think it's a great honour. I appeared before him once before. Uh, I, I'm sure these people will have lots more to say than I will. Miss Bennett, will you just say something? Oh, Miss Joan Bennett? I couldn't be more excited about the trip. It's a beautiful ship. I haven't had a chance to see her. I want to quickly get that below so I can. Fine. Go on, Pat. Let's have something from you. Oh, thank you, Reggie. Well, give me a break here. Tell you, you know, my name is Pat O'Brien. Come on, yeah. Yeah, How are you now? Yeah, but they can't see my... This isn't television, is it? Well, this is the greatest ship that I've ever seen because, first of all, I haven't been on that many ships, but this looks like the top of all. I say it's the greatest ship of all time, and I want you to know my wife is going with me. We're very excited about doing a command performance for the King and Queen. Excited, thrilled, and doubly honored, believe me, and happy to be with all these people we're so fond of. Here's my wife, Eloise. Well, we're sorry, Pat, but there's no time. From flashing New York, pictures of the opening session of the United Nations. To welcome delegates comes President Harry Truman. The sign of the times came when first words to the peacemakers dealt with the danger of war. Lately, we have all heard talk about the possibility of another world war. Fears have been aroused all over the world. These fears are unwarranted and unjustified. The United States of America has no wish to make war now or in the future, upon any people anywhere in the world. This is where you and I take a front row seat at the year's most fashionable wedding. We're going to see the marriage of the Honorable Patricia Mountbatten, daughter of Viscount Mountbatten of Burma, Captain Lord Braben of the Coldstream Guards. 
Apart from that old troublemaker, the English weather, everything was perfect when Lady Mountbatten arrived with her younger daughter, Pamela, who was to be her sister's bridesmaid. Then came the Duchess of Kent with her little daughter, Princess Alexandra. And what a thrill there was when we saw the royal family. The two princesses made really beautiful bridesmaids, and on the steps of Ramsey Abbey, tall young Prince Philip of Greece was waiting for them. The old abbey, the flowers, the crowd, everything was ideal. As Prince Philip spoke to them, I wish you could have seen Princess Elizabeth and Princess Margaret. They were wearing the most marvelous medieval dresses in forget-me-not blue. Then Lord Louis himself arrived, escorting his daughter. And I'm sure you'll agree with me that Miss Patricia was the loveliest bride of the year. People watching simply gasped when they saw her dress. Classically cut, it was a gleaming silver gold brocade. And here, just to remind the older ones, are the pictures Pat they took in 1922 at the wedding of the bride's father and mother. Many memories must have slipped back to this Mountbatten wedding of 24 years ago, when young Lord Braeburn and his bride came out of Ramsay's thousand-year-old abbey after the ceremony. First to greet them was Petty Officer Holder with the traditional lucky horseshoe. And among all the 1,500 guests, the three princesses and the bride's sister rejoined the king and queen. With members of the Mountbatten and Braeburn families, it made the ceremony a really royal one. It was a day, I'm sure, which no one who saw it will ever forget. And before we leave it, I'd like to wish the bride and groom, on your behalf, long life and the very greatest of happiness.